Okay, so there is another connection between a um, the motion of a rotating object and the sorts of regular velocities and accelerations that we talked about before. So in particular, um, if I have some object um, like this and it is rotating, I can consider the motion of a specific point on this object. You know, So maybe as I've drawn this, it's moving this way at a certain time, and then later it'll be pointing in a slightly different direction. If I considered a different point, then it would be moving faster, and if I considered another one, it might be moving slower. Okay, so each point on this object is moving in a different way at a certain time, um, but we can still talk about what's happening at specific locations. Okay, so um, as we uh, learned before, the angular position is given by this formula if we are considering um, the angle to be in radians. All right, um, and again, r is the radius, so the location of one of these specific points, and s is how far it is moved from some starting um, reference point. Okay, well, we can rearrange this. If what we really wanted was s, then we could um, write this as phi times r. All right, so you can figure out how far an object has moved based on the um, angle that it has gone through uh, and the radius of that point. Okay, um, and if we're interested in how fast it's going, well, we can take the derivative of that. So the um, speed of that point is going to be equal to d phi by dt times r. And remember, r is constant, so we don't have to worry about taking the derivative of that part. And so that's just going to be omega times r. All right, so the speed specifically we call the tangential speed. So we do a t subscript for that. Um, and that's going to mean that um, that is the speed tangent to the circle that um, is going around. So if I draw a circle here like this, the velocity um, at this point is going to be tangent to that circle. That's to distinguish it from a radial velocity that we could have. Um, the two components are tangential and radial. All right, so in a similar way, we can take another derivative and we can find a tangential acceleration, which is just going to be alpha times r. All right, so um, if, say, this was a wheel that was speeding up, then we might have um, some amount of radians per second per, per second that the, um, the wheel was speeding up, and a particular point would be experiencing an acceleration in meters per second per second. Okay, so um, this tangential acceleration um, is going to represent sort of the familiar speeding up or slowing down kind of acceleration. But this should remind you of the sort of centripetal acceleration that we saw in chapter four. So remember then we had the centripetal acceleration was v squared over r, and that was directed towards the center. Okay, so let me draw a new sketch. Um, we had for some point the um, centripetal acceleration pointing towards the center, and now I'm allowing for there to be some tangential acceleration as well. So the tangential acceleration is going to point perpendicular to that, like so. Okay, so sometimes we write um, the centripetal acceleration as the radial acceleration because that's just the direction. It's the component of the acceleration that's towards the center. So radial as opposed to tangential. Um, those are just two different ways to say the same thing. But notice that this velocity is the tangential velocity. So that's the speed that the point is moving. And we have a new expression for that. So the radial um, acceleration, which again is the centripetal acceleration, is um, v squared over r. Well, v is omega r, and that's squared over r. Um, and then if we simplify that, we get omega squared times r. Okay, so um, there are two components to the acceleration. Um, there's the um, centripetal part, which is why the object feels flung off of the wheel. Um, and then there's the uh, tangential part, which is however much the wheel is speeding up or slowing down. So those are two parts of the same vector. So we can actually combine them. The total acceleration is going to be the tangential acceleration plus the um, radial acceleration. And if we want to find the magnitude of the acceleration, that's just going to be the square root of the tangential acceleration squared plus the radial acceleration squared. Okay, so there are some connections between this rotational motion and objects just moving in a circle that we studied before. Um, one of the things that's really tricky about this, though, is we have roughly four different kinds of acceleration floating around now, and so we have to be really careful to know which kind we're talking about. Are you talking about the center of mass accelerating? Are we talking about a rotational angular acceleration? Are we talking about centripetal acceleration or tangential acceleration? Um, these are all slightly different. Some of them have the same units, some have different units. Um, and it's important to keep them um, separate in your mind because they are all a little bit different, but they're all also related.